have uh, done for more excessive? That's sort of hard to answer. It's surprising enough you think it would be a number, like 270 or something, literally hundreds. But the answer is not that easy to arrive at because many, many more people make application, initial application, by sending in the form uh, than ever move to the next stage. And it, it starts out like this. It's a pyramid. A huge number of, of people apply by sending in the form. And then it drops down whenever don't hear it from uh, 80% of those people ever again. And then they don't do this, they don't do this. They, and finally, we get down to a nitty gritty here of actually only a, a score or so in a year actually get to the point where they're ready to be now tested for the preliminary test. So it's not an easy number to give you, but it is literally hundreds. And in dowsing alone, that has been at least 80 to 85% of the total claims. Now, uh, uh, we have Bart Farkas. Uh, Bart, are you here someplace? Oh, Bart. Bart. I'm sorry. Bart. Hey, Hello, Bart. Yes. <laughs> Bart is, re is uh, preparing a report by analyzing all of the applications that have ever been meant for the million dollar prize. We're waiting with, uh, with great anticipation to see the breakdown on the kind of people, the gender, the location, the age group, and such of people who make these applications and what happens to the application as they pass down through this very exceedingly fine funnel here with a very small outlet on the other end. So that, that would be an interesting documentation part. I was just going to say, I would, I would think from the point your files began, which are maybe 35, 40 years ago, um, there's probably between 150 and 220 preliminary challenges that were Actually, got to that point. That's the point, that's the point that the client arrived at. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to take The question to Gary, I think, now, I, I presume that this test will eventually go on YouTube somehow, in some form. Do you think there'll be now that uh, the folks out there can see how it's done and how rigid it is, and you know that this is real, this is a real scientific test, mm -hmm. not just you know. Do you think you have less applicants for this, where people think that you know, they can get away with it? <laughs> well, in one way, they will see the integrity of the test. They will see how carefully done it is, and I, I think you have to agree with this, that what we showed you today uh, is, is for absolute integrity. The, uh, the care with which it's prepared uh, through various steps and such, and the, uh, the security with which it's handled uh, is uh, unbeatable. It, it can't be improved upon because we could have ended it right at the point where Connie had missed the three cards and said, okay, we all go home now. But we insisted on opening up the other envelopes to make sure that it, it was possibly, uh, there was a possibility that Connie could have won because the card was there and it was uh, properly placed, and etc. So uh, I, I think this both encourages and perhaps discourages some people. The people that will discourage is people who are trying to do some tricks on us. And we're going to get rid of those, we have not the time for that. We would need sincere people who really believe they've got the power. And if they do, hey, step right up. There we are. I'm actually expecting a, a wall of criticism um, from folks, or from our detractors, who are going to now be able to examine the test and piece by piece try to see a point where the shadow of Vanacek's hand covered a card, and that was the moment he switched the or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty damn clever, but he's not that clever. <laughs> uh, I have a question. I mean, I have scientists who have validated me. Um, can, I, can I go out of Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 right away, I'll run it in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> right back there? Yeah, I'm David Richards. Was the uh, Los I just had a question that wasn't disclosed in the first part of the test today about the protocol. Which is, I was surprised, a little surprised to see Banachek carefully keeping the order of the uh, envelopes as they came out of the large envelope. And I'm just curious, how, what, how, how did they get in that order? Who knew what order they were in inside that envelope? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is a good question. When, when it got to me, I, all I know is I was told I was not to mix that order up, that, that I'm not allowed to do that. And that kind of gives you sort of that double blind that somebody else has already mixed them up, they put them inside the envelope. When they come out, I'm not allowed to tamper them. We're doing the one table in order to just follow the protocol. That's all. That's as much as the protocol that I have. Allison can answer the beginning part of that question. They're actually shuffled and sealed by me at first, then Jeff re randomized. 
So I didn't know the order that were that they were in. Jeff didn't know the order that they were in. Banachek didn't know the order that they were in. The, the, just the obvious concern is that someone could know the order who was in the room. And it sounds like there was no way that you were shuffling them out. They were a double envelope, and there was no indications on the outside of the envelope. Right? right, because they were randomized twice before Banachek ever touched them. Right. That was why when Connie said, can I move the envelope? That when I say no, we cannot change the order of the cards. Connie, uh, Joe Obis from Denver, Colorado. Ooh, As I it. understand it, uh, you believe that you are the only person who has these powers? Is, is that right? No, no. That's what I I didn't say that. Okay. Because one third of the population on this earth can do something. And there is a meaning why people don't, uh, when they are coming here, or it says that um, I'm sure that many of them can do something, but it's not the right time to, to show people out there if you put them that, that way. Um, so therefore, nobody has taken the challenge. Thank you. I have one more question about the protocol. It seems like everyone from the JRS is very happy with the protocol as you've designed it. Question one, who came up with it? It was mutually agreed to, of course, but who invented that protocol? And the follow-up then would be, are you going to use this exact protocol to do similar tests of dowsing in the future, or every claimant gets different protocol? Oh, every claimant gets different protocol because every claimant is different. <clears throat> but Some people we, say they, they can determine colors of cards or objects or poker chips or whatever. And on the welfare, they can find missing children, oil, gold, whatever. Uh, every claim is totally different from every other claim. But if another claimant says, I can use dowsing, right? Yeah. Will you use this exact protocol? No, it depends on what they say they can do, you see. They, some of them say, I can only find flowing water, flowing fresh water. For example, you know that picture in Australia, of course, where dowsing is very, very popular. It doesn't work any better than it does here. But nonetheless, they, they have specific claims. I can only find water which is flowing east and west. Uh, Etc. They, they're very specific in, in most of them and their claims, and the test has to be designed. The protocol has to be designed to accommodate exactly that. The the person who makes the claim dictates the rules as to how these things will happen. All we have to do is filter it out in such a way that it's a double-blind procedure and that it is perfectly fair and above board, and the million dollars is put on the line. Is this protocol therefore retired? You're not going to use this? Unless it's exactly the same claim with me, or if, if, if I should wish to come back next year and do the same thing and use the same protocol, we don't know. Usually when a claim comes in, there's a small subtlety that's different, and that changes the protocol, even if it's a small subtlety. Right now, for instance, we do have a claimant, her name is Ann Gifford, and she will be coming to the front of the line soon. She also does sealed envelope identification, mostly playing cards, but she doesn't do it through dowsing. And as for the protocols, I do initial negotiations and write the first draft. And Jeff and I confer over what we've come up with. Everything's worked out with the claimant. And then Randy is contacted to finalize all of them and make any changes that he sees fit. Do you ever have statisticians or scientists? Oh, yes. Okay. Chip Denver does all the numbers for all of these. An important, couple of important points here. First off, Allison does the major bulk of the work here. So a lot of what you've seen today is Allison's work. Um, second, it's really the claimant who designs the challenge. Um, they come to us and tell us what they can do. For example, let's say someone came and said they could predict a coin toss. If you flip a coin, I can tell you what's going to be heads or tails. That is the protocol. That's the nascent protocol. Now, of course, we all know that that's 50-50 and it's not good enough. So we will do the numbers and come back with them and say, okay, if you can do that, can you do this? Because this fits what we need. And then if they agree, yes. If they don't agree, we finesse that. And a lot of times, that's where it ends, because um, people will not accept anything beyond a 50-50 chance in some cases. 